the colour <laughs> that's on the car at the moment, which is a, a very much sort of late 70s, early 80s, metallic, deep purple aubergine, um, which obviously was not, was not the original colour on the car. Um, the colour was um, known in America as, um, as uh, royal purple, which actually is really a lilac colour. Um, and with, with that particular colour, there was only 17 right-hand drive RSs in that colour. Um, I would probably suspect that a number of them have been repainted, maybe in different colours, but there's only 17. Um, and today, we, we, on the parcel, parcel shelf, we saw the original colour of it, and it's a beautiful colour. And I think that will also distinguish this particular car from, from others, that we are taking it back to how it originally was. So when we strip the car, there's not many areas of the car that's got its original paint left, but this area underneath the parcel shelf here, um, when the cars are painted, they get a very heavy layer of paint on here. And because it's had a parcel shelf soundproofing over the top, um, the paint doesn't get any sun bleaching. So we've cleaned this little area up here. We've had two different paint samples sprayed up. The reason we've used two different paint samples is different paint suppliers use different uh, pigments to make their, their paint color. So as you can see with the two different paint supplies here, there's a very slight variation. We've also got the original, original glazurite colour swatch. So we've got three, three options here, and then obviously the original colour. And looking in on that at the moment, I think that's a good option for the, uh, the colour. So since the car's been blasted, uh, as you can see, it's now been etched primed ready, so the car's protected. The reason we went down the blasting route on the body shell was purely because there's so many areas of small amounts of rust and damage um, that only the blasting will reveal. Um, so you can see it looks quite an intense process, but the idea was to preserve this car for a very long time. We didn't want any rust trapped hidden in any um, hidden areas so that's been fully cleaned back as you get a bit closer to the car you can obviously see the detail areas where you can see rust rust down the bottom here obviously we've removed this intermediate sill covering panel here so we can get the silencer heater tubes out but it reveals you know where there's been previous metal work done that's possibly not to the standard that we would work to um, as well as areas of the car which we'd normally expect to be really badly rusted through but they're not it's really solid so there's some huge positives to this um, stripping process again as you get a bit closer you can see the kind of quality that Porsche were work working to originally you know where you've got these areas where there's um, this kind of rough finish is lead. So wherever the cars were joined with metalwork, where the rear quarters went onto the back, you can see here, this is where they would finish it with lead loading. So when we go through our metalwork process, we will also do this lead loading um, back as it, as it would have been originally. But you can see this back panel is a, normally a prominent area where if there's any accident damage, you'd see it on this back panel. But the back panel is, is, is beautiful, you know, as are the inner wings as are the rear chassis legs. Um, it's, it's a very solid, solid car from that perspective. So as we now come inside the car, you can see, you know, areas down here where it's, it's quite distorted. Something's obviously gone on uh, in this area on the car in the past. It's had maybe a little bit of damage um, and it's possibly not been quite repaired properly. And you can see some light creasing around here. Um, we think the car has been pushed over slightly by the shape of the floor pan in here. Um, so, you know, again, the beauty of having it clean to this degree is it exposes, it exposes stuff like this. Um, you know, the, for example, we will not replace anything that doesn't need replacing. We'll try and preserve as much of this original metalwork as we can. Um, so rather than putting complete floors in the car, we will only replace the area like this floor here is very badly pitted um, to the point where it's like tissue paper in a few places. So we will repair that area of the floor. 
um, but we'll keep the rest of the floor original and we'll just straighten it and, and, and refurbish it. Another prominent key feature here is this, this bracing. So this is the uh, bracing that goes from the centre tunnel back to the torque tube which runs through the back of the car. This was solely only on the RS models. So, you know, it's is a key feature for the 2.7 RS model. And it's buried away and hidden beneath the carpet, so you don't normally see it, but um, yeah, that's a key feature to, that we look for. Areas down here where this is quite pitted here, this is just because you get leaking brake fluid from the, from the reservoir pipes. So this is normal corrosion that we'd expect to see. However, there are things like this where someone's fitted we think air conditioning in the past. Um, so there is a quite a few extra holes in the shell which are not required. Again, they will be, they will, will, will be metal worked and we'll remove those. As you get into the front of the car, down here, this is, this is corrosion that we would expect to see in an early 911. Um, you know, due to the batteries and the way their batteries are plumbed in, you naturally get a little bit of um, battery gas in the boot, you get water from the screen wash bottle, possibly leaking bonnet seal. So you always get corrosion inside here and also inside this cross member. So this is, this is not unusual. Um, quite often this has possibly already been got at and been maybe repaired before, but you know, the thing with this car is we're finding stuff that's not been repaired before. We, this is like what we would call first generation rust, which means nobody has been there and dealt with it previously. Um, the, the front of a 911 is very soft, so in any light tapping on the front, it instantly will compress and create depressions or deformations on the inner wing panels across here and down here. Um, and as you can see on this, it's perfectly straight, and the same again on the on the right hand side. So you know, we know it's a nice, good, straight shell. So we can see certain things have been, been done on the shell already where like this welded line you can see through here, there's been a patch repaired in there. It comes down here. There's also another piece down the bottom here. Um, so you can see certain things have been done on the shell already. We think there has been some light damage on this side of the car, um, which has created these repairs, you know, the necessary need for these repairs to be done. There's a little bit of gas welding down the, the wing flanges and across the front lip there but these are all areas that we've got to deal with and do work on anyway. So again down the bottom here you can just see where the metal is literally just like it is so thin and flimsy uh, it's so corroded um, and it, you know you've got the boot floor area into the inner wing across here. Um, this is all can easily be dealt with, um, <clears throat> but the type of metal work that we will do on the car is that, you know, if we have to do a repair, you won't actually be able to see the repair when it's done. Uh, so, you know, everything's got to be metal finished and it's got to look like it did when it left the factory. So one of the advantages to the stripping process that the car's been through is that it reveals areas like this. This rear seat area had got um, sealer over it on both sides um, it wasn't seen and you can see now it's been cleaned again it's so pitted uh, these the, 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 the crevices of the corrosion is so deep that as soon as you put a small pick on them they just fall straight through so this rear seat pan is going to be repaired in here and you can see equally on this side where it's where it's blown through um, and you may notice a, another interesting detail on the back of the car here, like these, these bulbous bits. Um, this late series RS run short trailing arms and there's big brackets that, that protrude into the car and Porsche had to relieve this area for clearance. Um, and it was quite, quite simple and they just put a, a bulge in the, in the metal form. So now the shell's been um, cleaned, blasted and we've inspected it all. We've got the metalwork parts that we need. Um, the car will now go on the chassis jig. We'll bolt it down. So it will bolt on all these key fixing points um, and we'll make sure the shell is perfectly straight and then the metalwork will commence and we'll just go through meticulously chopping out sections at a time and dealing with the corrosion.